beaming into your mind like a ray of cosmic revelation, smashing through the mainstream like a comet of prophecy. You're listening to Planet Verloc, your podcast for everything super, psionics, and magic tech. Yes, welcome to my show. Tonight's podcast is about the Psionics Radio Console. Covering Psionics and Radionics as a whole is a huge and quite a daunting task. I have published an ebook on the topic called Keep the Magic High, which explains psionics, radionics, psychotronics, and machine dowsing as a big overview explained from a high-level bird's-eye view, and then I explain to my readers how to build a simple psionics laboratory or psionics console for those with less space to build, and then we begin the journey into the magical lifestyle that makes all of this wizardry actually come to life in the real world. So tonight I thought I'd delve into one specific area of psionics which needs some explaining and this is about how we use dowsing with our augmented radio stations and setting up the more powerful and wide-ranging satellite radio station for psionics. So without further ado, let us begin. Well, it was during my seven-year residence in Japan where I began experimenting with servitors, runes, and then compiling my findings into a series of psionics methods. Borrowing radionics, I took the outline materials from my former mentor in psionics and began working with a powerful satellite radio system and control console. So my console station and desk included two projectors, a mini projector, a large projector, a heat lamp, handheld radio, a large industrial grade satellite radio, flashlights, crystal instruments, wands, and pendulum along with a series of dowsing charts. Now I also had a 8 mix sound changer box to jack my other instruments into including my cyanic helmet various projectors and lights and other instruments and you know kinetic amplifiers at the center of my console is the satellite radio and then above that I had an extension arm or table arm clamp which held my tablet computer sort of like a console monitor or uh, what might be like a terminal and then a tiny portable combat computer off to the side on the top tier of my console table uh, well that's quite a lot of stuff well the good news is that you don't need to have all this stuff at least not right away I certainly didn't I gradually built up my collection from things I purchased on eBay and Etsy and other places and some things I built from the various dollar stores. We can build up to that technical stuff later as you progress through my Insiders Club and that's at Verloc.club and also go through my books to learn about power nodes and psychic antennas and of course the more graceful and civilized instrument of our times the Miraculous Prayer Board Mini. So because I wanted to experiment with multiple levels of frequency and range, I purchased a rather elaborate decked out industrial satellite radio and it even came with the front face handlebars or a pair of handlebars resembling, you know, a military grade radio. But the purpose of having this radio was to experiment to see if FM was the only frequency that I could operate psionics with or if I could play with shortwave and AM as well including uh, airplane 
signals, all, all kinds, all kinds. Uh, and, and as a little explanation here, initially my mentor had instructed us to work with FM. And that way, when we're using the antenna to clip our other instruments onto, it makes sense. We're using the antenna to uh, bounce those signals. So, long story short, the tuner had a significant range on this satellite radio. I was picking up radio from Japan, Korea, China, and Russia exceedingly well. So, I had quite a bit of range to work with from my laboratory. The real trouble with an ordinary analog radio is that the tuner takes time moving through stations, channels, you know, manually doing this. I learned that with my satellite radio, including FM, shortwave, AM and the ham radio and airplane radio frequencies that the console included a programmable scanner or channel scanner. That is, I could set this to auto scan or universal scan all of the stations and I could also slow down to scan speed. I could also slow down the scan speed or speed it up. After experimenting, I concluded that the slow auto scan was not only advantageous, but also allowed me time for careful dowsing. Now, many people might use a pendulum to douse with. I do, but for this, I found that the flow of time and events, as well as what awaits me down the road of time, tends to change the very moment I start tuning the dials on my radio machine. Now dowsing with charts and patterns, that's another story, including looking into future events, and that's always worked rather well for me. Save except for when I was working with my radio tuner, because somehow this interaction with radio waves and electricity does something to my mind or to my brain that changes what will be possible later on down the road in space-time. So the pendulum was sort of out of the question for tuning. I tested this many times, I can assure you. So to resolve this problem, I crafted a new kind of rubbing plate or stick pad that I referred to as my drum plate. This name is due to one particular feature, and that is this rubbing plate is also hollow on the inside and giving about two and a half inches of depth. This instrument at about four or five inches across allows for the operator, myself, to tap on this instrument with my thumb and I am able to detect when and where to stop the auto scan on my satellite radio by tapping. And I'll give you a little sound test. Here I have my tapping drum right with me right here. It sounds like this. And essentially I would know where it was that I needed to stop. So that saves me a lot of time dowsing. Also these scans can loop. Um, the auto scan can loop or stop depending on the program set into the face of the radio console. So after establishing after establishing where to stop the scan, I would note the number of the digital indicator on paper, and then I would write this down, and I would take my pendulum out at this point and ask if I needed to move forward or backward from the channel or the station number that my scanner had landed on. The pendulum would indicate the appropriate swing and that would tell me where I needed to go forward or backward down the station and I would then toggle off the auto scan and switch over to manual tuning. Taking the tuning dial in one hand I would then rub my drum plate with the other hand as I carefully adjusted the tuner dial for the correct station and, and pinpoint that and we, I mean, you can pinpoint that down to exact numbers in between stations as well. Um, from there, a number of other instruments can be joined together, including some components I simply called 
patch amplifiers and wall mounted electro optic gouger staves to expand the overall operating potential. Um, in my insiders club I have documents on the topic of psionics multitasking which explains about how to move across various interfaces and um, platforms uh, and taking rates across machines including tethering operations, uh, psionic splicing and, and so on. Anyway with this arrangement with my satellite radio I was able to perform some experiments of changing results in reality in various games including a Japanese lottery to some degree. I could influence those numbers and also influence weather around the planet including the telluric energies inside of the earth. Right. So we're talking about weather um, stabilizing the ground during earthquakes, um, mending the mantle in Japan uh, and a number of other operations. Mostly however I noted the interesting power of this particular station and console for all manner of space-time manipulation projects and changing around world events. Now this is very important. I believe a great deal of my work while in Japan from the years 2009 to 2016 has made it possible for all of us on this planet to have this last epic battle for human freedom on the earth even remotely possible. Before that the game board was set up. It was endgame. Also I must say that I give credit to my friends and relatives in Japan for allowing me to do all of this research and to land and see an ancestry spirits of Japan for granting me their audience and to the shrines and temples hidden ravines quiet meadows valleys and mountain cemeteries where all of this power came to me and lifted my mind from the ordinary paper magician to the level of almost super level wizardry and I, I maintained this ability for a period of years while there. Uh, so with that having been said I want to let my listeners know that there is all manner of new areas of machine dowsing for us to explore and we're going to explore it. We are going to explore it and if you want to join my club uh, to get into the action please go to verloc.club and select a you know a commitment option monthly every six months annually and y you know l let's face it back in the day um, when Princeton University was um, running their uh, scientific experiments for psychic abilities including psychokinetics and possibly telemechanics and, and reading the future and all manner of stuff you know they probably would have succeeded better if they had had a mascot you know if all of this was somehow fun and that's really my goal is making this fun entertaining and rewarding so that the work isn't all in incredibly just exhausting and difficult we want this to be fun for people to learn about psionics and learn what you can do with it for your personal life not just some random experiments of some guy in a laboratory making the temperature on a, therm a thermometer rise up and down. You know, we're trying to teach you things that are practical that you can use psionics for. So maybe one day in the future, many, many years from now, I might have that funding to build an institute where you know, something like Harry Potter or uh, I don't uh, I don't know, doc, Dr. Xavier's school for the gifted or something. But, you know, it would be publicly available for people to go and learn things. All right, so I also have some ebooks, audiobooks, and some printed books for you to enjoy at verloc.com slash shop. And that's pretty much all for tonight, kids. Coming up soon, we hope to be joined by Pirate Jaffe Ryder from World Pirate Radio on my podcast at Planet Verloc. Also, we may very possibly have a very powerful magician and outstanding author of 500 plus books on magic, S. Rob, 
and join us for a personal interview. And a lot of cool things are coming to the Verloc New Thought Movement, so I hope you'll stay with me and enjoy the show. Thank you for joining me on Planet Verloc Psionics and Magic Podcast tonight. And until next time, as always, always keep the magic high. This is Tom Verloc, signing out. (laughs) 